uh, this plaque will ensure that my dad's name will never be forgotten. Well, all I remember he telling me was that when he came back after the first expedition, he was very dark and he came home back home snow white. The only thing I can remember he showing us, we put our hands up into his ears and they were like a board. And he said that was a result of frostbite. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're in Kerry, almost at Dingle, four and a half hours away from home. And I'm in, I think, what is one of the most beautiful places in Ireland. Um, this graveyard holds a very, very important explorer, Tom Crean, um, a very humble man. But I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Tom's story and we'll take a walk around the graveyard as well. Few periods of history have produced such a wealth of remarkable stories as the heroic age of expeditions to the Antarctic over a hundred years ago. Little more than two decades of exploration threw up a series of powerful dramas that encapsulated the very essence of discovery, endurance, courage and tragedy. In the thick of it all was Tom Crean, an unassuming Kerry man whose extraordinary exploits made him appear to be indestructible. Born in Kerry in 1877, Tom Crean figured prominently in three of the four major British expeditions to Antarctic and spent more time in the ice and snow than either of the more celebrated and instantly recognisable figures such as Sir Ernest Shackleton or Captain Robert Scott and he outlived them both. Tom first went south in 1901 with Scott's discovery expedition on which he served his polar apprenticeship and learned the skills to survive. Having already been in the Navy for a number of years prior, he returned a decade later when Scott made his ill-fated bid to reach the South Pole in 1911. Crean was a key figure on the expedition, dragging a sledge to within 150 miles of the South Pole before being ordered to return to base camp. He was among the last three men to see Scott alive. When one of his companions, Lieutenant Evans, collapsed 35 miles from safety, the courageous Tom volunteered to go for help, going across treacherous terrain in sub-zero temperatures. His only food, a few biscuits, no sleeping bag and no tent, and already physically exhausted after having covered around 1,500 miles on a march already. This dangerous journey took 18 hours and earned him the Albert Medal, then the highest award for gallantry. Crane also played a central role in the dramatic endurance expedition with Shackleton. The ship got crushed on the ice of the Weddell Sea. Tom helped to sail the tiny James Carrad across the Southern Ocean, the wildest seas on earth. He then walked 40 miles across the mountains and glaciers of South Georgia to bring rescuers to 22 comrades left stranded on Elephant Island. Tom managed to cram more danger into his life than most in their lifetime, but yet he became almost a forgotten hero for about 80 years. Most of the men on early polar expeditions were from middle class backgrounds, went to university, etc. And Tom came from a poor family, Tom being one of 10 children. Tom left school early and could barely read or write. After his return to home, he decided to keep a low profile and didn't speak of his past. And I suppose when he did return, Ireland was a different place for him. But after some time living a quiet life, he opened a pub and called it the South Pole Inn. Now the South Pole Inn is actually just up the road from here. Tom lived out the rest of his life tight-lipped. He barely spoke to his young daughters even of his life and refused to answer visitors to his pub of any of his um, expedition. He gave no interviews, nothing. Tom died in 1938, aged just 61. Tom's funeral was the largest Anna Scall had ever seen. He'd contracted peritonitis after having to travel to Cork via an ambulance when denied a life-saving appendectomy in the Tralee Hospital closest to his home because no doctor capable of performing the operation was on duty when he was admitted. 
Ironically, in his hour of need, there was no one to save him. Tom Crean lies here, buried just a few kilometres from his South Pole Inn, in a family tomb he built with his own hands. And this is the grave of the amazing, humble um, explorer, Tom Crean. Um, a lot of information there, but you know, Tom was a very humble man. He didn't speak very much of his ex expedition and um, like he just lived a normal life afterwards. Um, as I said, he was in the Navy. He actually lied to get into the Navy before um, his traveling. Um, so he served some time there in the Navy, as I said. And after all the exploring, he came back, he married, he had his children, he settled, he opened the pub as we talked about, and he is buried here. And it says, Crean, Tom Crean, Antarctic explorer, died 27th July 1938. His wife is here as well, Ellen. She died the 2nd of January 1968. Their daughter, Katie, died 8th December 1924 and extended Crean family rest in peace home is the sailor home from the sea that is actually very very beautiful home is the sailor home from sea and you can just see that lots of people come to visit tom's resting place it is um, a very very popular uh place for visitors to come i mean all over the world they come to visit tom and um he really was an unsung hero um, it's absolutely amazing to stand here. It not of uh, you know it is the most beautiful of places, but to to stand at this grave, especially, it's just fantastic. It says in loving memory of our darling Katie, from her father, mother, and sisters. Um, in affectionate remembrance of Tom Crean, R.I.P., who died 27th of July 1938, from his sorrowing wife and children, and Ellen, then his wife, 1968. So Tom was only 61 when he passed. Now, I was told that a beautiful porcelain wreath was left here by Lieutenant Evans, I believe it was, because he actually helped save um, Lieutenant Evans's... Um, life um i don't see it um i know they were afraid because of its value they were afraid it would be stolen and it's not here now so maybe they have it somewhere else for safekeeping but there we have it guys tom crean and you can actually see all the rocks that people leave stones as i said bouquets of flowers as well and um, we actually have some flowers in the car we brought some artificial flowers just um, because they will last, you know, and I'll put that up on top of the, the vault. Um, just look at the amount of vaults that are actually in here. It seems that the west of Ireland and Kerry, even more so, have all of these amazing vaults. Um, loving memory of her parents, Timothy. 1935, his wife Mary, 1967, and her grandparents Patrick and Julia Deneen, and also the Deneen family interred here. See those big old, um, I don't know what you would even call those, like a big handle, aren't they? But they would remove the, the front of that and put the, uh, the body in. Another one here, look at that. Don't see any names on it it's very uneven ground here wow look at this in appreciation of the lives of hannah kennedy 1923 her husband michael 1946 their sons jack died 1959 patrick died 1981 and his wife kate died in 1944 and the same design here, those big handles. So all these mounds, I presume, are graves. Um, like when you think about him being an explorer, I'm going to have to show you. The views here are something else. 
I don't think I have ever, ever seen anything quite as beautiful as the drive up here. Um, we're going across mountains and true mountains and this is where he is laid to rest for an explorer. It seems fitting that he's here and we can actually hear a stream running down. There's actually, see the globe up on top of that one there? That's like one of those immortals. Oh, yeah. It's just up on top of that. I don't know whether I'd be able to get I a think, look at it. I think it's, it has to be one of the most beautiful graveyards in Europe, if not the world. Yeah, I think be. so. Like the, the location is just amazing. That is all filled with, um, like the moss has grown up into it. But those are like the immortals. We can't even see what's in that globe. We can see some of the, what's left just there broken. Somebody has taken the globe off it or the dome off it, the glass dome. And that's what's left. Those are porcelain flowers and they are worth a fortune. I think that's the ring off on the vaults. That's the ring off on the vaults, yeah. I was just showing them on the doors. But like with the boat, boat agree, it was the longest drive to get here. Some things are worth waiting for. But yeah, and this is like, I have had friends who have been here and keep, you know, keep saying, yeah, it's a long drive, it's a long drive, but it's worth it, it's worth it. And they are so right. It is absolutely stunning. Just look at the mounds. This is typical west of Ireland, um, old graveyard. We've more of these vaults here. Look at these, these big rings for the entrance. Pierce on the far one down here. Nothing on this one. That's the only thing about it that a lot of them don't seem to have um, any plaques on them. Like these are all vaults, look at them. They're just completely covered in grass. It's crazy. Look at this one. Look at that. <laughs> it's not amazing. <laughs> oh, it's completely covered in like a moss. Can you imagine the weight of that over it's time? It's like a, a miniature, oh. a miniature sized village of the one I did, isn't it? It is, yeah. Smaller version. I mean, just look again at those views. Like coming from the Antarctic to be laid to rest here. That's what I'm saying, for an explorer, this couldn't, you know, this is so um, apt for him, like, so well suited. And we would have lots of people exploring the mountains of Kerry. Some of these are slightly worse for wear, but in, in general, they do actually seem to be okay, don't they? Yeah, they've hold, held up. They have held up, but I think the place is cared for well because Tom Crean is here. Um, it's important. This one says Barton, rest in peace. Just there, and Pierce family, just right beside it on a stone, it says Pierce family. So this also is a vault or a crypt. Look at the name of this stuff that uh, grows on the mountains. See, that's fungi. They're just um, headers. Michael Brosnan, Brosnan. and Johanna, 1975. Both died. Michael died February 1975 and Johanna August 1975. You see a Christmas wreath here. It looks like it was just freshly placed. Yeah. Just look at that. They're so... Um, like it's almost like sponge, isn't it? Oops, trying to manoeuvre my way. I keep looking at the mountains because they're just so beautiful. Like these are all vaults. This one has been painted even. Tom Shea died April 2015, so we have a relatively new burial in here. This is the O'Shea. 1956 was the first interment. Yeah. There's rosary beads there on top. Right? There is, on a little tiny little cross. Oh, Mum and Dad, it says, that is beautiful. This one is up higher. But these, like, the, it, those are all vaults. It's just this grass has completely covered them. Let's just see if we can get around here.
Oh, I just seen a lizard and I missed it on the camera. We don't have very many lizards Look here in there. Ireland. Look at them there. Yeah. They're actually quite rare to see. He's gone in under there. Um, so that's probably the second time in my whole life that I've ever seen a lizard. I can't remember the proper name for them, but they are, huh? I hope it's a sign of good weather. Maybe it is. Oh, this fault seems to be um, somewhat falling apart. All right, you can see that just a hole there in it. But I mean, these, I don't know what age these uh, vaults are. They certainly look very, very old, don't they? 1700s, I don't know. I think the only, anything I've been able to read has 1800s on it. But these, I suppose these ones could be much older, of course. And we walked this way when I was telling you the story of Tom. So the one down there is um, straight ahead is unusual. because The tired. Hogan family, yeah. It's this tired. one is the Kennedy family. Uh, Johnny Bond, 1944. So they have put fresh plaques up. This one, look at Mary Griffin. Uh, April 2013. So I'm presuming she's gone in there as well. Baby Timothy, 1901, poor little boy, um, and Pat, JB, two sons they buried, and a daughter. Um, so they have painted that one a blue, and that does look like it has been sealed up recently enough. Yeah, but this one, yeah, it's like tiles, isn't it? The Hogan family, Bridget Courtney. Anaskal, that's the area that we're in now, is Anaskal. And these are all vaults. This one has a little walkway and everything into it, huh? Donated by Reverend Morris Hogan, brother Joe, wife Mary, sister Mary. So that one, I'd say, has a new enough a new internment, addition. yeah, because it seems to be recently. It actually seems to have had some sort of work done to it recently enough. It seems like the grout is still kind of fresh looking on it. John Fitzgerald, his wife. Um, she died in 1950 and he died in 1949. And we've loads of vaults here. An interesting one up here on top. These are obviously the the highest ones, aren't they? Yeah. I just can't get over the view. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. See that vault up there? There's the tree growing on it. Yeah, I might have a look at that one. It's like walking up the mountain, it's hard to get up around. Yeah, that one is has a tree growing right up through it. Wow. In fact, it's uh, more of the tree is there. It's actually lifting the top of that vault. Gosh, look at that tree, guys. I mean, you couldn't get any more Irish, really, could you? It feels very enchanted just standing here. I always find those trees really enchanting. Um, and once again, just the views are just so stunning like. And a lot of people, you know, comment under the videos. Oh. Thanking us for doing these videos because they can come here. Yeah. So in other words, we're bringing Ireland to you. So it's nice to see all these remote beautiful places that we haven't even seen ourselves yeah. today. So. Well, I've been to Kerry several times in Killarney and Dingle, but I mean, certainly I haven't been here and uh, it was probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to do it. I'll probably never be back again. 
Um, gosh, the ground is very uneven, isn't it? But we're going to actually get the flowers now and put them on Tom's final resting place. So we brought a purple rose for Tom all the way from Wexford. Um, a giant of a man, a humble man, an explorer. And uh, we would just like to say rest in peace to Tom and his family, of course, that are interred here. A brave man, a strong man. And uh, it's been a privilege to be able to um, stand here. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Did you know about Tom? Um, but for now, guys, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all again soon.